Hey friends, today we are doing lesson 70, and that's advanced abstract equations. I don't know why, I really love abstract equations. You might say I'm a little off, or you might say I'm super cool. I guess that's up to you. We don't have too many examples to do today, which is kind of exciting. Um, but um, I, we can do the practice problem too, and I, you can either make your own choice about whether or not you need to do that once we get there. Let's go. All right, first, solve for B. These are so much fun. Okay, of course, the first thing we have to do here is what we have to do every time we see parentheses, and that is the distributive property. So we end up with X equals, we're gonna multiply by P and by P. So we have P over A plus PM over b. Now we're trying to get the b by itself, so our next bet is going to be to, we've got a plus sign here. So what are we going to do? We can't just start dividing things out because we have to have common denominators or we have to get rid of the denominator. And if you recall, one way to do that is just to multiply everything by a b. So if we multiply by a, b over here, that means we have to multiply everything here by a and b. And when we do it like this, we can end up canceling stuff all over the place. So we know that the a is going to cancel over here, but we're going to still need the b. And then the B is going to cancel here, but we're still going to have the A. So we have, whoops, not just the X. We have ABX equals PB plus APM. Oh, now that we don't have fractions, so much the better. Now, we always keep in mind we're going to solve for B. That means we need all the Bs on the same side. So I'm going to move this over here and have abx whoops erase abx minus pb equals apm now i'm going to factor out the b so i have b times ax minus p, whoops can't factor it out and keep it in there at the same time minus P equals APM. And I'm going to divide out the AX minus P, so I'm left with P equals APM over AX minus P. Ta-da! Now, uh, you'll notice in the book, sometimes they have things different. Like they might call the, what, the numerator here. Um, instead of APM, it might be PAM. Maybe like MAP instead, instead of PAM or APM. And or the X and the A could be in other different order, and it doesn't really matter. It's all the same. It's all good. You are still right. Okay, let's do the next one. Go ahead and give yourself a chance to try it on your own. Okay, my turn. First things first, distributive property, it's what we do every time, every time we see parentheses. So we're going to have MB over 1 plus C plus MA over P. That stays the same. So now, if what we're going to have to do is get rid of our common denominator, or get rid of our denominator, which is really what we want, and that means we're going to have to multiply both sides by 1 plus C times P. So it's going to look a little weird. 1 plus C and P times XP equals. Now remember, this would cancel, and I'm left with a P over here. And this would cancel, and I'm left with 1 plus C over here. And that's going to complicate things a little bit. Not here. We have MBP. No big deal. 
plus, but now we have distributive property. So we have MA times one, which is MA, and MA times C, which is MAC. Remember, we're solving for C. Now look at all of this over here. We've got to take care of this. We've got two P's, so we're going to have X P squared times one plus C. And hmm, I'm trying to wonder if it's a good idea to go ahead and distribute that right away. Let's just do it. So I have X P squared plus X P squared C. equals all of this. Now I'm solving for C. There's only one of these over here that has a C in it. There's only one term. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to right away bring this over to the other side by subtract. So it's going to be minus MAC. At the same time, XP squared has no C in it. So I can bring it over to the other side. So I can essentially switch these as long as I remember that I have MBP plus MA minus XP squared. So I can move that. Now I can factor out my C. I am going to run out of room, doggone it xp squared minus ma equals all of this mbp plus ma minus xp squared thank goodness we don't have to simplify that and then we just divide by all of this so i'm left with a whole different color so you can see c equals mbp plus ma minus xp squared all over xp squared minus ma. You may be tempted to suddenly say, oh look, I can cancel the ma's and the xp squared. No, you can't. They are attached to each other here by a minus sign and up here by a minus sign too. But this is negative XP squared. This is positive, positive MA, negative MA. Don't get confused and think you can start canceling all over the place. This is your final answer. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And this is the practice problem. So if you're done, if you get it, then you don't have to do this one with me and you can just move ahead. But if you want another, another example, here it is. All right, give it a try and see how you do. It looks a little complicated. Okay, my turn. You should be done by now. You should have paused, gotten everything taken care of. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is note that we are going to find K. Now, got to get K by itself. So the first thing we have to do is simplify as best we can, get rid of these parentheses, which means we're going to have PZ and 2sp, and that p is going to go away. Now, as usual, we have this silly, complicated denominator, and we need to multiply by that on both sides. So we're going to have y and x plus k times mx equals... Now, if you remember, we're going to multiply up here by x plus k and by y. So the x plus k here will cancel and we'll be left with y. And the y here will cancel and we'll be left with x plus k. So I end up with e z y plus 2sp times x plus k. Oh, already complicated. I'm going to have to also distribute this and I have to distribute this over here too. And I don't like all these on different sides, but it doesn't really make any difference. I'm gonna, I can move it over here, I can move it over here, as long as I multiply everything. So it's gonna be y times x and mx times x. So we're gonna have y 
mx squared and mx and y times k plus kymx equals pzy plus 2spx plus 2spk. Okay, now remember again, k, we're looking for k, so we need all the k's on the same side. So either I can move both of these over to the other side, or I can just move this, this one over to the other side, and switch this one over to the other side. Either way, you're switching a lot of stuff. So I am going to go ahead and say this one needs to go over, and this one needs to go over. So I'm going to bring this over. This is a plus, so it's going to be a minus. I have negative 2 SPK plus KYMX equals PZY plus 2 SPX minus YMX squared. Look at all of this. If you look at every one of these, and there's nothing that is in each one that you could factor anything out. So interesting. Now these, however, we intentionally did this because we need to get this K out of here. So we're going to factor out our K. And we're left with negative 2 SP plus YMX equals all of this. PZY plus 2SPX minus YMX squared. Then we simply divide by this, negative 2SP plus YMX. It cancels. So we're left with K on one side, negative 2PS plus YMX. See, I switched these. doesn't make any difference at all. So K then equals... PYZ or PZY plus 2 SPX minus YMX squared over, you can do this either way, negative 2 PS plus YMX or, as the book has it, YMX minus 2 PS. Either way, it's all good. So I'm going to put this e equals K over here so that I can. Put my box around it. All right, friends, that's it. I hope you're doing these well. Remember, the more complicated things get, the more important it is that you be able to show each step as you go down in your notes as neatly as you possibly can. I run out of space. I don't care if if I was doing this in my notebook, I would I would use half a page if I needed to. It doesn't bother me at all. Better to be neat and tidy and be able to find your mistakes than not be able to find your mistakes and just get stuff wrong. All right, so let's don't do that. Let's be tidy in our homework. And next time we'll do lesson 71. And I hope you guys have a great day.